وديلي سلامي يا رايح للحرم وادعيلي وسلم لي على هذه الأمم وديلي سلامي يا رايح للحرم وادعيلي وسلم لي على When I came uh, walking around this area, um, one of the local guides uh, very helpfully came up to me and uh, just explained that uh, indeed that this is the, the site of the Sabah al Masajid, the, which is known as the, the Seven Mosques, uh, next to the uh, Khadwa of Khandat, the site of the Battle of uh, Khandat. Uh, but what he was explaining to me was that um, at the time of the uh, Sahaba, anhum, uh, these Masajid were not uh, there at that time, and that as time went by, um, out of respect for those great companions, massages were built on this uh, very site. MashaAllah, we are here at an incredibly historical site within Medina Al Munawwara. This is the site of the Battle of the Ditch, the Battle of the Khandaq, the Khazwat al Khandaq, also known as the Khazwat al Ahzab, the Battle of the Confederates, where something like 10,000 soldiers, a mass of Arab and Jewish tribes under the leadership of the Quraysh, came to Medina Al Munawwara to ultimately destroy the Muslims after the Battle of Khandaq. This took place 50 years after Hijra. The ditch, mashallah, the idea of the ditch is something which was very novel and new to the Arabs. Salman al-Farsi, the Persian, is the one who suggested as a battle strategy to make a wide ditch. SubhanAllah, this raged on for something like 21 days. Now, during that time, there were injuries on both sides. But the, the trench was dug in such a manner to protect the northern side of Medina. Because the other sides of Medina, the other three sides, were protected by lava. Uh, as well as tree blocks. And SubhanAllah, what you see behind me here is the Mount of Salah. And Salah is a location where the Prophet وسلم, positioned his khayma, positioned his uh, tent uh, during the, the battle which raged on for some 21 days. During that time, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, made an incredibly powerful dua in which he said, Allahumma munazil kitab. He said, Oh Allah, the one who revealed the book. Sari al Hisab, the one who is swift in reckoning. Ihzam al Ahzab, destroy the Confederates, all these amassed forces that have come to destroy Islam, let they be destroyed. Wazal zilhum, and let they be totally shaken. This is mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to the dua. The dua was mustajab, and the enemies of Islam, the 10,000 Confederates, were utterly destroyed and demolished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what we see here, mashallah, to mark the site of the, the, the battle of the, the trench, we see a very historical old masjid site which has been named after the great companion Salman al Farisi, whose idea it was to build the trench. This is something unknown to the Arabs. The Arabs were used to Al Qarbar Far, which is they, they would come in and attack and then they would flee from their enemy and then regroup. With this, you can see, subhanAllah, this is the site very close to where the actual ditch was was established and mashallah behind me we find a very beautiful masjid which was established just some 10 years ago which is called Jami al-Khandaq which is the masjid of the Khandaq of the ditch
pitch, which inshallah will go and pray and pay our respects there, inshallah. When we visited the, uh, the site of the Ghazwat al-Khandaq, uh, the site of the Battle of the Trench, which also was surrounded by uh, al-Masajid, the Sab'a, the seven masajid, um, it was truly uh, magnificent to be at the site where the Prophet wasallam stood with the companions to defend Islam once again from the enemies. And subhanAllah, the message I really took from that visit was when the Prophet wasallam for three continuous days, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for victory. And for me, Internalizing that, it just shows you the strength of the Prophet Sallallahu Iman and reminds us of the hadith that the dua mukhul ibadah, that dua, prayer like this is actually the essence of worship. So really I, I took that away from me uh, when we were there. Continuing my theme of the masjids, I'm here at the Masjid of the Trench and obviously the famous story of Samana Farsi where he gave the idea to the Prophet ﷺ to build a trench around where the enemies of Allah could not attack because of their trench. Now this masjid sits on that same site and if you look at this masjid it is absolutely amazing. Or would you expect it from a masjid, stained glass windows, the light is coming through beautifully from here and it's so so much space, the expanse is amazing here. of the historical masjid of Salman al-Farsi and also within the same location are also the Sabah Masajid which are known as the Seven Masajid. This is the site of uh, many of the major companions masjids the likes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu anhu, Aisha radiallahu anha and of course Salman al-Farsi radiallahu anhu. His story is incredibly inspiring and inspirational uh, to us all. This is somebody who sought out the truth. He went through many trials and tribulations through his life, which ended his, his time towards entering into Medina al munawwara as a slave. He studied from the people of the books, the Jews as well as the Christians. And in, in those books, he saw clearly written that there would be a messenger, a final messenger that would come at the end of time. And he knew of two clear signs. The first of which was that he knew that the final messenger would not accept sadaqah, would not accept charity. And he also was looking for the Khatam al Rasul, looking for the seal of the Prophet. So one day he comes with a dish of dates to present to the Prophet and he says, These are sadaqah for you, these are a charity for you. The Prophet said, we, we don't eat from charity. The following day he came and he said, This is a hadiyah, this is a gift from, from, from me. And the Prophet did eat them. And he thought, Okay, so this is the first time. And then on another day he comes to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, as if he's, he's starting to peer over the shoulder of the Prophet The Messenger of Allah وسلم, lowered his rida, his upper garment to show clearly what Salman al-Farsi was looking for and this was the Khatam al nabiyyin he was looking for the seal of the Prophet وسلم, which was positioned directly behind the heart of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, the size of something like a pigeon egg slightly protruding but very beautiful in imagery and subhanAllah, this is that companion, Salman al-Farsi 
who gave the amazing, outstanding idea of building the ditch to protect the northern side of Medina, which was left exposed to the Ahzab, the Confederates, as they came in. And subhanAllah, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted victory to the Muslims on the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whilst we were at the, uh, the site of the Battle of the Trench, uh, mashallah, surrounded in that area are masajid named after the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I particularly enjoyed being uh, next to the Masjid of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu. It really it, it teaches you about sincerity and commitment that he, he sought out the final message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he got his goal to be with the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina, a free Muslim. As you can guess, my kind of thing in this tour, in this kind of Hajj, is to explore the different masjids that we have. And look at this, mashallah, the is typical Medina style, two-tone colours. And you've got the member of the, the Imam who comes through those doors. Look at that door. Is that a normal door? No, it's not. It's an absolutely beautiful door. And this is exactly where the Imam will give the khutbah for Jummah here. Right here, you'll stand, you'll give his khutbah to the masses who come for Jummah Salah right here, right in this masjid. And look at this wonderful thing here, just the detail. Everywhere you look, you've got Qurans. These Musafs laid out so people can just come, open up the piece of the Quran and read. Sunnah of entering any masjid is to pay two rakat tahita masjid. And the tahita masjid is the greeting of the masajid itself. Uh, look how beautiful that is. So when you go to someone's house, you say assalamu alaikum. When you, they will return you the salam with wa alaikum as salam. But here, we are praying two rakat uh, sunnah prayer in this masjid. And how amazing has Allah given the rank and the status to the masjid that every time we come, we pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prophet said, when you give salam to your, your, your brother, that's it, the sunnah of the Prophet Instantly there's a connection between whether you're black, you're white, you're Asian, you're Pakistani, you're French. Assalamu alaikum. Straight away you know that person's Muslims, you have a code. We just entered into uh, Masjid al-Jum'ah. Masjid al-Jum'ah was the masjid that was established by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on a Friday when he left from Masjid Quba with the Sahaba, from, with the Muhajirun and also the Ansar and from Banu Najjar, the maternal uh, family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that came from Medina to greet him outside of Medina. Uh, as we enter into the masjid, you'll see uh, a very beautiful intricate dome uh, within the masjid. And Written inside the dome very beautifully is Surah Al-Jum'ah and uh, a very beautiful verse within Surah Al-Jum'ah speaks about the obligatory nature of the Friday uh, Jum'ah prayer in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi shaitan rajeem, bismillahi rahman rahim Ya ayya alladheena amanu idha nudhiya lissalati min yawm al-jum'ati fasa'u ila dhikri allahi wa dharu al-bay' Thalikum khayrun lakum in kuntum ta'alamoon In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O you who believe when the call to the prayer is made on a, on a Friday, Yawm al-Jumu'ah, Fas'u ila dhikrillah, you should rush 
in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ and you should abandon trade ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ that is better for you if only you knew it was amazing to visit and pray in Masjid al-Jum'ah you know subhanAllah this was the first masjid where the Prophet sallallahu prayed the Jum'ah prayer surrounded by the muhajirun, the emigrants that had come from Makkah al-Mukarramah with their new brothers, the Ansar, the helpers from Medina this really was for me a moment of reflection upon the unity of the Muslims at that time and of course which continues long into today left from the Masjid of Salman al-Farsi came up a flight of stairs and uh, we've come now to Jamil al-Fatih the Masjid of Victory SubhanAllah named so because it's understood that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for three continuous days during the Battle of the Khandaq he, he turned to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in dua in which we were mentioning below that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called on Allah as the Manazil al-Kitab the one who revealed the book the one who is sari' al-hisab, the one who is quick in reckoning. Destroy the confederates. And make them go into some earthquake state. Just destroy them, utterly destroy them. The Prophet ﷺ prayed this for three days. It was on the third day that the dua was mustajab. That it was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Muslims were granted victory. SubhanAllah, here we are in one of the date palm farms. Uh, this is uh, Mazra'at al uh, the name of the farm, which is very closely uh, linked to Masjid Quba. And in here we find, as very much in line with the son of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he himself, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, planted uh, date palms. And this is a, a blessed fruit. You know, uh, SubhanAllah, in, in the West, we often talk about superfood, superfood this, superfood that. Actually, when it comes to it, for us, we should really think about our superfoods, subhanAllah, here are very much found in plentitude here in Medina al Munawwara, the Ajwa dates. Uh, amazing, as we were reading from the Ahadith earlier, that these are a source of cure. Uh, these are a source of being able to be protected from uh, magic even, as well as poison. And uh, subhanAllah, it's, it's wonderful to be here. And it actually, it very much reminds me of the, the story of a Nakhla within Medina al Munawwara. The Prophet وسلم, when he used to stand to give the Jum'ah Khutbah in Al-Masjid al-Nabawi, he used to stand next to a, a Nakhla, to, next to a date palm. And then uh, uh, one of the Sahabiyat, one of the female companions, radiallahu anha, she constructed a three uh, wooden stepped minbar for the Prophet وسلم. So on that following Jum'ah, the Prophet وسلم, prayed his Jum'ah prayer at the new uh, minbar. On that Jum'ah prayer, the companions all swore by Allah, they, they heard the Nakhla, the date palm actually crying. The Prophet والسلام, he came off the pulpit and went over to the date palm and the hadith says that he started to actually hug the date palm and he started to console it as the hadith says as a mother would to her child and we found that the date palm started to calm down 
And then later on the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they asked the Prophet what was that conversation? What were you speaking about? And the Prophet explained that because he had moved his position of giving the khutbah from the date palm to the new minbar, and that, that, that's extraordinary, that this is what's called infi'al al-Nabi that this is the creation of Allah reacting to the Prophet and then he gave the uh, date palm a choice and which is beautiful he said D would you like it that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dua for you and that you grow fully back and are able to come out with all your dates or would you like to be with me in Jannah subhanAllah and you can imagine what the date palm asked for the date palm asked to be with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu in, in, in Jannah itself and this is what we also pray for as well MashaAllah, it was uh, amazing to visit the date farm, uh, which was near Masjid Quba. Um, for me, as a reflection, I got to learn a great deal about the Ajwa dates. I've always heard that they're uh, super special in, in, in the faith, but to actually see the ahadith regarding those uh, and the incredible healing qualities they have was truly amazing to see. And also, it, it, it remained, you know, I was reminded of the fact that Medina uh, is a place of dates. Um, it reminded me of the hadith even that the Prophet ﷺ, when he did Al Isra wal Mi'raj, the night ascension, he visited a place full of dates before knowing that he was going to do his hijrah to, to Medina. So it brought all those memories back, and of course, Medina is very famous, world, world renowned for its dates. <laughs> talking about earlier how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Maryam alayhi islam at the period when she was giving birth to Isa alayhi islam a point which was so painful for her that she's quoted in Surah Maryam as saying that I wish that I was dead that I wasn't I was a thing unknown or forgotten subhanallah that's how much pain she was going through a young girl some of the mufassirun say maybe she was even 14 years old she goes to a makan and sharqiyah to an, an easterly point of Masjid al-Aqsa which is the Bethlehem Bethlehem and she gives birth to Isa alayhi islam at the foot of a date palm. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to her that there's an ayna, that there was fresh water spring next to her to keep her hydrated. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs her to shake, huzzi ilayki bi bijidi al nakhla, to shake towards yourself the date palm trunk, subhanAllah. You know, and here I am. I like to think a grown man who's, who, who's got a bit of strength, but subhanAllah, I am not doing anything whatsoever to this date palm. This was why the ulama, they say that it was from the karama, from the grace and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was given to this blessed woman, the Siddiqa Maryam alayhi salam, that she was able to shake the date palm and she was given rutaban, she was given dates which were fresh. And subhanAllah, in that, no doubt is a secret for our sisters who go through childbirth to keep hydrated with fresh mineral water and to have dates and incredible superfood. Allah. <laughs> وادعي لي وسلم لي على هذه الأمم وديني سلامي يا رايح للحرم وادعي لي وسلم لي على